My name is Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, a commercial illustrator, and a writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti. I am, of course, Aaron Lopresti. I'm excited today because we are actually talking about art this time. And when you're talking about art, there's no greater name, at least in comic and fantasy art, than Frank Frazetta. I got the new, finally, uh, Tashin Frazetta art book. It's huge. And it's like, uh, it was like $200. It was expensive. But it's this huge coffee table sized book with just all sorts of art and everything in it. And we're going to take a look at it today. So let's quit talking and get to it. All right. Here it is. You can, you can see the size of this thing uh, just by the fact that I had to pull my camera back as far as it'll go just to fit it in. Um, now, the unfortunate thing about this is this, this box that it comes in, as you can see here, uh, this Frazetta box, it's got artwork on it and everything. It's a cool box. And it'd have been nice if they had shipped this in another box with this inside it to protect this, because this got dented and dinged in the process. I mean, it shrink wrapped, but they didn't really protect the box because, well, I don't know. I was going to say most people wouldn't really consider this the prize. It's the book inside. But, you know, Tashin produces a lot of collectible books. And so you would think that they would have an understanding that this, even though it's just a cardboard box with printing on it, that it's part of the collectible, I guess. You know, it's, it's what you're going to store the book in. And so we'd like to see this protected as well. But yeah, what are you going to do? I got, uh, I think I got free shipping on it. So, and this book is freaking heavy. Uh, so maybe they thought, you know what? We're not going to put any extra effort into shipping this if we're shipping it for free. <clears throat> but anyway, that is what it is. So let's pop this open. Just make sure the book's in good shape on the inside. That's you know, mainly what I care about. It does appear to be the case. <laughs> look at, I mean, look at how freaking big this thing is. Look at that. My goodness. Oh, uh, I'm not a young man uh, lifting weights anymore. I guess I better get back to at least the lifting weights part. I can't become young again. But um, anyway, we'll put the book aside. So this is shrink wrapped as well. So we're going to go ahead and cut this open. Now, I got in on this book, ordering this book like, very late. In fact, this book is, they have like apparently uh, like a presence in Europe as well, Tashin does. And um, so they had run out of their supply of copies that they had in the U.S. And so I ordered this and just missed out on their last couple of copies that they had. So then they had to wait for another shipment from Europe, I guess. So I had to wait a couple months, but that was all right. It was worth the wait. Now, I have seen the inside of this before because I wasn't going to get it because I own every flipping Frazetta book you can imagine. And it's like, what, what art could possibly be in here that I've never seen before, right? Or don't already have in another book. But... I was at a con and somebody showed me the book and I was like, wow, it was just so, I didn't, first of all, I didn't realize it was this big, but then when I saw everything that was inside it, I was like, yeah, I've seen a lot of this stuff, but there was still some stuff in here that I hadn't seen before. So I got it. I coughed up the $200 and here it is. Um, and I got to tell you the paper, it's, it, this is a really high end book. Um, famous first edition. This is 
copy number 4,112 of the Fantastic Worlds of Frank Frazetta. So it says right here. Um, in a first printing of 6,000 copies, printed and bound in Italy. Look at that. It's all European. So it must be good. Um, that's one thing you can count. Uh, you can say what you want about Europe. But uh, in terms of, you know, when they're producing stuff for the arts, and uh, they generally do a pretty darn good job, um, publishers over there. So we got some Buck Rogers stuff in here. Tashin Presents. Dun, dun, dun. Look at the color. Oh, just love this. I wonder if Frazetta's paintings, I mean, this was this vibrant, the color in here. The originals, I mean. Look at the blue and the... This, of course, is probably Frazetta's most famous painting. I know it sold for the most money, um, The Egyptian Queen. Um, but holy smokes, look at this stuff. You've got... Uh, it's like I, I desperately want to move the camera so you can see it better. But if I get it in close and you can't see the whole book, so it's a... Uh, a conundrum for sure. So we'll make the best of it here. Maybe I can slide the book over a little bit so we can see some of this a little bit better. Um, then we get a little reflection on the black, but that's okay. So anyway, so we've got, so we have an introduction here and they, they opened it up with one of his best famous funnies, Buck Rogers covers from the 50s. And um, Dan Nadel wrote one of the introductions. I don't know who that is, but I guess I'll read it and find out. Of course, this is a this is an extremely famous illustration right here that was used for a comic cover, and I believe it ended up on Weird Science Fantasy number. Uh, I'm guessing. Don't hold me to this. I think it was 27, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe 29. It was originally a Buck Rogers cover. It was supposed to be intended to be in the series of Buck Rogers covers that this was a part of, this one here. Um, but I don't know why it wasn't originally used for that, but it didn't get used for Buck Rogers covers. So the main character here um, was Buck Rogers, but he had to go in and change the helmet. So it was no longer Buck Rogers and just somebody else. And then they ran it in, I believe this is the untouched up cover. This is the Buck Rogers. And then I believe they removed the helmet and he just gave the guy like blonde hair or something. I have to go back and look. But this was originally intended to be a Buck Rogers cover, but it ended up being not. Yeah, Weird Science Fantasy number 29. That's pretty good. I pulled that uh, right out of my head there. Um, so we've got like, you know, here's a Ghost Rider cover. You did a series of covers for Western Ghost Rider uh, in the 50s. Um, Squeeze Play. This is from the this is from um, Shock Suspense Stories number 13. It is the only solo story that Frazetta ever did for EC. And by solo, meaning he penciled and inked it. He did a lot of combo stuff with Al Williamson, where Al Williamson would pencil it and Frazetta would go in and ink it. Um, but this is the only solo story he ever did for him. And of course I have it. <laughs> so anyway, you can just go through this page by page. There's just tons. That's pretty funny. Something he did for um, little Abner, probably, no doubt, when he was ghosting the strip for uh, Al Cap. Um, <clears throat> we got some creepy covers here. This is all still part of the introduction and, and write up. And then, this is a pretty famous piece, of course, this uh, brush and ink. And I say brush and ink because he did not use a pen. This is brush work. Not a nice, delicate line he got on there. Just tremendous stuff. So there's, then you start getting into the bigger pictures. This, of course, is from, um, this is a Pellucidar trade paperback, or not trade paperback, but paperback novel, but I can't remember which Pellucidar it was. Um, should say here. This, I'm sorry, this is Venus. Escape on Venus is the name of this book. So it's an Edgar Rice Burroughs book. But uh, look at this double page spread. This is uh, this was actually a wraparound cover 
dust jacket cover for the Doubleday books of the John Carter series that Doubleday published as hardcovers in the 70s, early 70s. And um, I actually have them. But anyway, there's tons of different, uh, of course, the movie poster for Luana. You, may, you might recognize this pose. This ended up being the cover for Savage Pellucidar, I believe. I mean, not that exact painting, but that pose with the, with the leopard and everything and the girl with the spear. Um, <clears throat> there's another John Carter piece, Molly Hatchet album cover. Um, I mean, he was all over the place. People using his images for uh, K-Star magazine, the Mothman. This is, I always love this. I love the colors in this painting um, this was a cool painting too this sort of like combo alien ship with a you know a sea bearing vessel from the 1700s or whatever um, this one too is pretty nice this girl underwater with the shark I mean yeah they're all pretty nice um, girl looking at the moon I had no idea but that was a penthouse penthouse that was used as a penthouse comics cover I doubt it was done for penthouse comics but they got use of it there um, so anyway, we go, th that's just all just art for the introduction of the book, right? So now we get into part one, 1944 through 1959. So it's going to be a good deal of his comic work. Of course, Funda, um, solo, uh, Tarzan type strip or comic book that he did, um, probably in the late forties, I was 48 or 49, probably, um, there's more. He did a bunch of romance stuff. There's a look at that cover layout for Weird Fantasy. I actually have this issue. There's the uh, published cover right there. Um, God, we could spend hours looking through this thing, and I will. But as you can see, there's just tons of finished work and sketch work in here. Uh, some of his. Uh, I think this was uh, part of this was I know this was from an unfinished EC story right here. This looks like men's magazine type stuff. Um, I always love that piece, that leopard or lion, mountain lion in the shadows there of that tree overlooking the cabin. I mean, what a great piece. Dramatic use of uh, light and shadow. Now, uh, this is like weird romance type stuff. Some Buster Crab comic covers. Oh, here we go. Here's the uh, <clears throat> the Buck Rogers covers in black and white. Man, let's look at the ink work on these. It's just freaking amazing. Of course, this is one of the more famous ones right here. This might have been the last in this series. But if you look up famous funnies, um, just, you know, Google it. Famous Buck Rogers, Famous Funnies, or Presetta Famous Funnies. It started at issue 209, and I want to say there's 9 or 10. can't remember exactly how many. Maybe it has every one of them in here. This is a bunch of his romance work and his Johnny Comet newspaper strip that he worked on. Um, just, man, what great stuff. Anyway, so there's one, two, three, four. Oh, then we're going to show those four. But there was like, I think, I don't know, nine or ten of those, like I said. Um, this looks like some sort of weird romance comic, although the guy gets, she brands him in the face. Look at that. He tried to, he'd done her wrong, so she took a branding iron and branded his face. Don't you just love the 50s? Um, well, let's move ahead here real quickly. Look at some of these kind of layouts and sketch stuff he did. That, this is the kind of stuff that's really cool that I haven't, you know, you get to see all the time. Like, I've never seen that piece before. I don't, you know. It's a sketch for an un, unknown project. No, well, that's pretty helpful. Um, this is interesting, this watercolor. I've actually seen this in person because um, Mark Alessi, the, uh, the owner or founder of CrossGen Comics, had this on his wall in the in the, in the office, um, one of the uh, the um, meeting rooms, conference rooms, 
And that was just, I would go in there all the time and just look at it up close, you know, and, and take a look at, uh, you know, his technique. So this is such a great piece. I mean, yeah, it's a nude and everything, but it's still just wonderfully done. Um, sea Witch. There's some, I've never seen this before. Um, the Mad King. Some more Venus cover. I love this cover. I think that's really cool. I mean, like I said, we could go through this, and that's what I remember from even just being a, from a kid and wanted to copy it. And that was so great. But this is this is a freaking huge. That's another Pellucidar cover. I want to say is that Savage Pellucidar? Uh, it's just Pellucidar. Okay. Nakedy, nakedy. Ooh. Uh, Tanner of Blue Star, I believe. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I think that is. John Carter. Um, the Moon Maid. That's a fairly famous. Is that a painting? So you can see there's a lot of stuff we Kublai Khan portfolio. There's a lot of stuff you've seen before printed other, other places, but uh, some stuff I haven't seen before. Like this little piece here, I've never seen that before. Uh, some more paperback covers. Oh my gosh. Conan the Berserker or the Destroyer, excuse me. God, this is such a great painting. I'm getting a little bit of reflection there. I apologize, but um, you know, there's just, I mean, it's like, this is like 400 and some pages or something. I mean, it's just, look at that death dealer. Um, that's from the Fire and Ice portfolio, I believe. Yeah, Fire and Ice. Um, I haven't seen that before. Interesting. I believe that's Dark Wolf from Fire and Ice. There's oh, this is such a great talk about a great movie poster right there, man. It's the Fire and Ice, the painting for the Fire and Ice movie poster. Um, I think this is Battlestar Galactica. Seems like a really bizarre episode of Battlestar Galactica. So is this here. It must have been... Um, these are an ad, ad for TV Guide. I'll tell you... If I saw this in TV Guide and tuned in to watch the show, I'd been very disappointed in what I got. But yeah, he did a lot of Battlestar Galactic stuff here. Um, all right, let's uh, zip down to the uh, what we got here. More barbarian stuff. A lot, like I said, a lot of this stuff you can find in other books, but I've never seen that before. Um, I don't think I've seen that before or that I have seen that that's his, uh, I believe this is from his, um, um, illustrations Arcanum book. Yeah. Pretty sure that, uh, Veritek put out in the early nineties, like 91 or 92. I've never seen that before. There's a Vampirella piece. I always like this, although I didn't really, I don't know what's the deal with this monster dude with that kind of weird elephant mask looking thing on there. And then this guy with his knife and the girl, of course, I just, I've always liked that painting a lot. Here we go. Now we're back into some more comic stuff, Ghost Rider stuff, creepy magazine, blazing combat, movie posters, uh, book covers. I mean, this book is just, it's the ultimate for Zeta coffee table book and like i said i know the price tag at um 250 bucks is uh yeah it's steep but if you're uh just a crazy lover of i'm trying to eliminate this glare crazy lover of uh frazetta um you know, I don't know how you don't get this book, but uh, anyway, there you have it. That's a quick look through the fantastic worlds of Frank Frazetta. 
uh, published by Tashin Books, and it's a big one. And uh, it may be the Frazetta book to end all Frazetta books. Uh, we'll see. Six months from now, probably something else will come out. But uh, anyway, hey, you guys, thank you for joining me, taking a look at this video, taking a quick look at this book. Um, I'm going to spend a few hours looking at it. I can guarantee you that. Um, but if you wouldn't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, notifications, all that good stuff uh, to help this channel grow so I can not only provide you guys with drawing live streams, which I'm sure many of you check out, uh, but also these, these shorter videos where I, you know, preview some comics or some art um, and talk about those type of things uh, in a shorter format to be more, to be accessible to more people. So uh, you guys liking and subscribing helps grow the channel so I can do all of this kind of content. Um, but I appreciate you guys uh, uh, joining me and uh, also be aware that uh, my Crowdfunded project, um, Wraith of God Bloodhunters, is still live on Indiegogo, and you'll find the um, link to that campaign in the description of this video. So if you get a chance and you haven't backed that or checked it out, please run over there and take a look. You might like something there that uh, you weren't expecting. So anyway, until next time, take care, and we'll see you soon.